Yeah, let's see. Yeah, because we have 10 more minutes. We can do the model of white noise, random walk, and then we'll save uh, um, the moving average model, the autoregressive model. Uh, we'll maybe do this on office hours if we run out of time uh, for next week. And then we can also do, um, what's it called? Maybe a little more code along of like actually doing a model either with Facebook Profit or another tool and stuff like that. Sound good? Cool. All right. So uh, let's get into our different models, right? So our, these are these are some very basic ones, um, which will evolve into the um, autoregressive and moving average and then combining those parts. Okay. So the simplest one basically is the white noise model. Um, essentially, it's a stationary series. It doesn't have any dependence on time. And because white noise meaning like, oh, it's just random. Um, does everyone know what white noise, like why it's called white noise by chance? Like you guys know like white noise, the, the sound, right? Do you guys know why it's called white noise versus another color? Yeah, it's basically to represent. Um, so for example, okay, white noise meaning like white means all the colors of the rainbow, right? Is that if you co combine all the light colors of the rainbow, you get white light, right? So um, essentially white noise, when you hear that like static, essentially it's all the different frequencies of um, that be can, can be produced uh, randomly. Uh, there are things like things you can do as well as like pink noise and blue noise, which are more geared towards like different parts of the spectrum and everything like that. So um, actually I find pink noise really useful, really nice to like listen to because it kind of like muddles down a lot of the noise going forward and everything. Um, so interesting, little fun fact. But anyway, white noise basically just means random. So what's nice about this is that because it is random, it's going to be a fixed constant mean. Essentially nothing's changing, right? It's just randomized around the mean itself. Uh, we have a fixed constant variance, right? Because again, random, so nothing has really changed. And there's no correlation over time since, again, the pattern is random. So the point is basically is that we have a fixed mean, nothing really changes um, over time. Uh, we have a constant variance, right? Because again, it's random and then no correlation, okay? Um, note that uh, when we say Gaussian, usually Gaussian just means it's normalized between zero and one. I'm sorry, not zero and one, between zero and one, but a mean of zero and a variance of one. So this is our class of Gaussian, okay? Cool, all right, so let's check this out, right? So let's say we are, we're basically making up data here, right? So I have a number of days is 100. I'm gonna start it off on January 1st, 2015. Um, and the period number of days is just 100. So I'm basically creating a series here. So I'll go ahead and run this guy. I'll also note that I'll put the average, I'm just making up data right here, but basically I'll put the average as 10, the standard deviation is three, and this is gonna produce a normal curve, right? So if I run this now, I can now see, for example, if I do, series. You can see here, this is our different values right here. Um, basically, this is our actual, what's it called? Um, like our values that we're going to use that's kind of just randomly created, right, from this average 10 and 3. Okay, And then going from here, we can combine together. So we actually have um, a time series, which the data is going to be time series, or temp series, so that's going to be the actual data, all these points. And then just the index is going to be the date. So we have an order from like January 1st to whatever 100 days later is, okay? So we do this now, you can see this is our randomness, right? So you can see it goes from January 1st to looks like April, uh, mid-April, maybe almost May. Um, so you can see here is that if we took an average here, so if I do this real quick and actually do time series dot uh, mean, this should give an average of about 10. We can see here about 10, right? If I do standard deviation, we should get a standard deviation of about three, okay? basically how much it can fluctuate. So note that there's no real time dependence in here. There's nothing to say there's a pattern in here, there's no upward trend, there's no variance and like how they fluctuate other than just randomness. Okay, cool. Um, any questions on what this is or how this was created? Okay, so good. So this is our first start. It's like, okay, we got random noise. Awesome, like real exciting. So next part basically is our random walk. So our random walk is adding a little bit of more complexity and you'll see each one of these models essentially is adding new complexity to it, right? So what a random walk is basically is that instead of having just like this randomly put in, so remember when I put in like this value right here, um, let's say if you pick out what I show, um, here we go. If I pick out number 6.215, whatever, right? The next value, is not dependent on this previous value. It's only dependent on what the average and the temp is, right? And it'll produce those random numbers. So a random walk is gonna be dependent on the previous one. And the reason why it's called a random walk is like you can kind of imagine it like, um, I think the, the, the scenario usually is like a drunken person, you know, walking around. 
is that basically like they're more or less random, but where they are currently is going to depend on where they're going to be in the next step. Like they might take a step behind, they might take a left and right, but they have to start from that position first. So that's why we call it a random walk. Okay. So um, note that there basically, there's no specified mean, so we don't have to specify any specific mean. There's no specified variance. Um, this is strong dependence over time because it depends on where you were previously versus our white noise. It didn't matter what the point was previously. Random walk, you'll see kind of going up and then down, but there's, because it's random, you're not going to have like a real mean or um, variance like built around time. Okay. So the formula for this is pretty simple actually is basically the time that you are, this yt, you can imagine like what the value is going to be. So the time you are right now is going to be equal to the time you were before plus some value. And this some value is just basically going to be some white noise. So we do like, um, you can see here is like um, a function of like t, right? t meaning time. But that t basically is going to be completely random. So really, you should think of it like it's not dependent on the time itself. It's just like, oh, it's this point in the random. Uh, like uh, white noise. Okay, cool. Makes sense to everyone for this equation? All right, cool. So uh, this actually makes some examples, right? Or actually build this out. So I'm going to walk this through a little bit. So now I put the average is zero, standard deviation is zero. That's going to be based on our, or sorry, standard deviation is 10. That's going to be based for our white noise model. So that's going to be basically how our distribution is. Our average, we're going to average over on this Gaussian, actually normal curve, right? But this normal curve of average zero and a standard deviation of 10. Basically, it can fluctuate um, to 10 for that standard deviation. We're going to do over 1,500 points, right? And then we actually have, um, like we had before, we're starting at January 1st, okay? And then I'm basically producing this epsilon, which is going to be really our white noise, right? I know this is the same thing, NP dot random, normal, average, standard deviation, number of points. So this by itself, let's put this up right here, okay? This right here, if I go ahead, if I do, um, let's do, See if I can do this real quick. Ooh, this is not going to work well. Never mind. <laughs> well, let's, let's try this real quick. So instead of time series, let's do epsilon. Of course not. 100. Oh. You can see here, this is our rant, this is our just white noise. And you can see there's no time dependence in here. So we're gonna combine this white noise right here, this is an array, with our random walk. So now what we do, we start off with y equals zero. So we're starting off at the zero point. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some fanciness. So instead of doing a for loop where we do y zero and then plus the first white noise to get y one, and then take that value to get y two. So what that would look like if we were to do something, it'd be like, oh, we have y zero. And then y1 is going to equal to y0 plus epsilon 0 like this, right? And then y2 would equal y1 plus uh, so epsilon 2 or 1 like this. What we're doing, we're doing a shortcut. So we'll notice that, well, this right here, okay, we'll just go from there. But if you go here, the goal, if you just replace this, that's just saying y0 oops, plus um, e0. Plus this part. Well, if you notice, we're just basically adding up. Y3 is going to be looking something very similar. Y3 is equal to Y0 plus E0. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> look at the same time. I'm not doing a good job. Uh, 1 plus E2, right? So basically right here, you'll notice the pattern basically is, oh, you take Y0, whatever you started off with, and just add up everything up to this point. So we could do something like, oh, let me just do from the beginning. That, right, that would be the equivalent of saying y3. So essentially, we're going to use that shortcut because this turns out to be much faster than us trying to do a for loop going over and over and over again. So we'll just have y0, and then y0 is just going to be np dot cumulative sum, so c uh, cum sum, right, of epsilon. So basically, that's just going to add up each part and it's going to add up on a new aspect. So this values right here is going to be a time series of 1500 long, right? Because that's what this np uh, cumulative sum. Just to show you again what this looks like, you can see here it's just our different values going forward. So if I were to put in, um, I realize what time it is, but that's okay. Epsilon, you can see the first value is minus nine. Well, minus nine plus minus six, seven is minus 16, right? And then add minus seven to that one, we get about minus 24, and so on. Okay. So that's what's going on here. 
we get our time series, and then we can plot it out. You can see here, now is that we have a very strong time dependence, its previous point really matters, or the next point really matters on the previous point, and we're moving around. Um, note that eventually, if you do this long enough, we would eventually approach the same zero. But um, note that we start going down a little bit, then we go up, down, up, down, and for the most part, we might end up being about zero, but because it's random, we might end up being off of zero. Okay, cool. Does that make sense to everyone, how this was built? Thumbs up sounds good. Chimes. Okay, I see some sideways. Okay, so the main thing to realize is that this point right here, we just say, okay, at this point, do a random number, and then you move up or down, right? Either up or down, and sometimes we go down, sometimes we go up, and we just keep repeating that for each individual part. And then this just quick guy right here is just to do a shortcut so we don't have to do a for loop. Okay. Cool. All right. So last part, I know I'm a little over time, but I'll finish this up then for this last part. Time to do you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you guys look tired, so um, I won't take it too long. So uh, last part basically is adding up essentially, it's a random walk with a drift. So basically, you tend to imagine like if you were a drunken person, kind of like you could go left, you could go right, right, going kind of up and down. Um, there's also like a wind kind of blowing you kind of thing. And so oh, there tends to be this wind. So you tend to go off to the left over here or the wind continuously blows you off to the left while you're going randomly. Okay. So essentially that adds a constant here. And essentially all that constant is essentially you're just adding that on um, each point. So in this case, every step we take, we might go left and or up and down, but we also will travel every single time 0.05. So we'll see it drift upward. So you can see here, if I plot this out now, you can see here's the original random walk. And you can see here's with the drift of 0.05, you can see it's still that same structure, but I'm just kind of drifting in one direction. Note if I put minus 0.5 here, I'd be walking in a different direction. Um, if I have something a little bit larger than one, you'll see that I'll drift off a lot, right? You can see I drift quite frequently. That's because even though I'm still going random, I'm still drifting off in a certain direction. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so are there any questions on like, how um, the random, random walk, walk I think works? eventually will we oh, be cool. discussing like scenarios in which we would want to use a random walk and like real world examples of when you would use a random walk to model something. Yeah, so a random walk is really important when it's the previous before. So, right. and the randomness basically is saying, oh, are you gonna go up and down? But it doesn't necessarily have to be random too, right? Like we're using random in this case where you have equal chance of going left and right um, based on a Gaussian distribution, but you might have something, a higher probability of doing certain actions over another one. Um, but going off of just that saying it's random, um, basically you can think of like the stock market where it's like, oh, well, if you have a high value now, well, it's mm -hmm. unlikely that you're just going to suddenly have a small value in the next part. There's going to be some dependence on the previous value that you had. Yeah. If you're trading for $100, it's likely that the next day you'll have slightly above or slightly below $100 mm -hmm. and then kind of going forward. So that's essentially what's going on here. And would like temperature, like weather temperature be another kind of example, even though there are seasonal, like an overall seasonal trend within, like if one day is warm, you're probably gonna fluctuate based on the average temperature from the day before, right? Right, so you could yeah. Go, or you could go down, but your starting point would be the average from the day before. Yeah, that's right. And you can think okay. of like uh, the weather maybe in a smaller set of season, like within like a yeah. month period or something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like if you're like you're not going suddenly or even for the out the day like this is really for any mm -hmm. model um you can imagine it's like if you started off um at 62 degrees fahrenheit right well you don't suddenly expect like an hour from now be negative 40. it's not mm -hmm. completely random um also you can think of it also in that case you can think of like going throughout the day like as the day um goes longer like from the morning you can think of it with a drift is that basically there's a heating element that's going to increase the temperature and you're going to go towards that you know value cool yeah cool. awesome question um anything else you guys want to ask okay cool i'll go ahead stop it here then sound good okay so